empowers all students to compete in a global society and inspires our students, parents, staff, and community to answer the question, what if? Thank you, Director Poshin. Director Beck, would you please read our guiding principles? Yeah. Opportunity. We provide abundant opportunities to empower students to reach their full potential academically, creatively, and socially. Collaboration. We foster an environment that allows students, families, and community stakeholders to come together for the betterment of our students' education and future. Transparency. We share relevant and important information with our students, families, and the community to maintain open and productive communication. Thank you, Director Beck. Superintendent Schneckloff, would you please read our goals? Tonight, we're going to be focused on goal four to foster the innovative use of finances, facilities, and staff. Thank you, Superintendent. Up first, we have a public hearing. I will now conduct a public hearing on the bus lot relocation to the Armory Project as shown in the 95% plans and specifications. Notice of the hearing was published in the Quad City Times on March 25th, 2024. Anyone wishing to speak on this item, please step forward to the microphone or call 1-312-626-6799 and enter meeting ID 993-1331-1515 and passcode 0101. Nine five. State your name and address for the record. All right. Seeing and hearing none, I now declare the public hearing closed. May I have a motion? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move the board approve the plans and specifications for the bus lot relocation to the Armory Project as shown in the 95% plans and specifications. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Motion has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. Motion carries. I will now conduct a public hearing for the approval of plans and specifications of Truman drainage and facade project. Notice of the hearing was published in the Quad City Times on March 25th, 2024. Anyone wishing to speak on this item, please step forward to the microphone or call 1-312-626-6799 and enter meeting ID 993-1331-1515 and passcode 010195. State your name and address for the record. Seeing and hearing none, I now declare the public hearing closed. May I have a motion? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move the board approve the plans and specification for the Truman drainage and facade project as shown in the 95% plans and specifications. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Motion has been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. Ayes have it. Motion carries. All right. Now for the reason why everyone's here tonight. Can we make sure we get someone to come back here and take a photo of all this? This is a packed house. Um, before I go into that, I want to remind everyone, when you come up and speak into the microphone, make sure you get clear, close to the microphone so they can record it. You are being recorded on YouTube right now, so you will be YouTube fameless right after you come up and talk at the meeting, okay? All right, with that, we are going to move on to recognitions, our athletic recognitions. I will turn it over to the superintendent. Thank you, President Goza. Tonight is uh, an extraordinary night, and uh, we're going to be highlighting our students and coaches and programs all throughout the district. But as it says right here, um, our mission every day in Downport Schools is to grow excellence. And this room is filled with students that are constantly doing that every single day. They're supported by programs that are that their whole goal is to grow excellence, grow wonderful human beings. But none of that would be possible without the guardians that are in the room. And that's one of my favorite words, the parents and guardians that are here. 
the countless hours that you put in in the gym or the auditor, where, wherever it may be, taking your child to events. The, I can't imagine some of the picture roles that you have if they're similar to other parents. Just thousands and thousands and hours of pictures to, to help your child grow excellence. And so tonight we're here to briefly talk about your child. Their, their coach, their program a call, come, is going to come up to the podium. They're going to speak on the program, call the students that are that uh, attention to the students. But one of the things I want to remind our, our student athletes that are here is the board. Uh, we're all going to take a picture up here at the end. OK, and so don't run off anywhere. That, that's the you'll know you're about ready to go home and watch the national championship game when the group picture is ready to happen. So tonight we have Tammy Conrad here with us, and she's going to lead us through our presentation. Tammy, thank you so much for your hard work of putting this presentation on and the wonderful event that occurred downstairs. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, Superintendent Schneckloth. Good evening, President Goza, Vice President Klein Jerome, and directors. For, for those of you who don't me as as I don't know me, as I had mentioned downstairs in the gym, I am Tammy Conrad. The part-time district athletic director here for our district. I'm honored to stand up here before you to, tonight to introduce our 110 student athletes and three coaches who have received either MAC all-conference recognition, have been state qualifiers, or received state recognition. Before I proceed, I would like to take just a quick moment to mention our high school athletic directors. Mr. Mosier is here from Davenport North. Mrs. Lillis, Michelle Lillis from Davenport West is unable to be here tonight because they have a uh, soccer game makeup. And um, Mr. Peterson from Davenport Central also is in attendance tonight because of a, another event. Thank you. Our high school athletic directors are responsible for making sure our student athletes have what they need in order to compete and to see that those competitions go off without a hitch. In addition, I want to thank them along with all the coaches of our district for the countless hours that they put in. I would also like to do a quick shout out to Phyllis Meyer, our district athletic secretary, who does a lot of behind the scenes things. We've had a lot of teams that went to state this year. She's the one that's responsible for booking the hotels, making sure you know, the, the per diems are there for the kids so they can eat, and um, making sure that all the transportation is, is lined up. So thank you to her. And those are just a few of the things she does. Uh, in addition, she arranges the officials that anybody, I'm going to do a plug right now. Anybody that wants to become official, take the classes. We're, it's a hard, hard position to fill. So um, anyhow, athletes, thank you for representing DCSD on and off the arena of play, whether it be the pool, the gym, bowling lanes, or on the mat. The effort you put forth during the season or in the off season is being recognized here tonight. Parents, thank you for supporting DCSD athletics and most of all your child. I'll now begin by introducing uh, our assistant girls wrestling coach who's gonna start us off tonight. The girls wrestling program is a district athletic program combined of uh, girls from Central North and West. You see Coach Park's name up there, but he is unable to be here tonight. So where? There she is. Come on up. I'm Catherine Lloyd. Um, this was my first year, and I didn't know I was going to have to make a speech, so here it goes. Um, we had Greta Bruce, who actually finished second um, this year, and um, she was kind of our rising star. She was a two. This was only her second year, so... She's, she's one of those girls that just, she took it on. She never wrestled before. She said, I want to try it. And she's just a natural athlete. She embodies everything that, that you would want in a wrestling person. She just comes in. She's not afraid to take it on. Um, we had, um, I'll hit Jadalyn second because she's, or last because she's actually here. Um, JC Mason, she actually, um, she qualified. She went out just at what we call the blood rounds, which is metal rounds. Um, she tried so hard. She had a really high goal, and she 
almost made it. And Hannah Park, um, she's not here. They all had um, athletic commitments tonight. And she went 0-2, but she still had a goal. Her goal was to make it, and she made her goal. Um, our overall program, we exceeded our previous year in so many ways. And I cannot say what it is like. Um, I joined the program this year because I watched last year. I'm associated with a nonprofit organization that oversees the state as well as the country. And I saw magic last year with the girls wrestling and, and I wanted to be part of something big. And Davenport has so much magic and, and the kids and the coaches, it's, it's an amazing program and I'm so grateful to be part of it. Um, now, Jada Lynn, she is here. She did not medal, but she did, she did make it. And I'm going to tell you, she is what I want in our room. She is a leader in the room. As a senior, she come in, she was an encourager to everyone in that room. She, she taught the kids that were just coming up what they could do. She was always an encourager. She pushed the room. She never let the pace slow down. But outside of the room... She's also an official. She took up a new role outside. She wanted to, to do more in the community, so she's an official. And she's not stopping. She's also going to coach next year. Not for us, but another local school, so she's also going to continue. So she's, she's, doing, she's doing what we want. We, she's growing the program. She's doing so much more for, for the community, and she's such a great representation of what we want to embody. And, and when you see her... She's, she's what we want. And, and as a program, I, this is it, you guys. She's, she's it. So I, I, you're welcome, man. You did it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Janeline, good luck to you next year, except when you wrestle against Davenport. Okay. All right. I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and um, introduce the coaches from Davenport Central. First up, we have Coach Brian Heller, who is going to uh, talk about his players, who all conference and also state. I uh, did have an opportunity to go up to Iowa City and watch him compete, and that was a lot of fun. So congrats on a good season, Coach. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. Um, it was a, a great season once again. Boys, come on down. Um, as they're coming down, um, the the recognition that sometimes goes, um, you know, unseen or whatnot. Uh, Coach Kyle Verdon back there, it's one of his first years at Davenport West, and he did one phenomenal job this year. Uh, he should have been one of the coaches of the year. Uh, it was absolutely outstanding, and, you know, it's just one of those things you, you don't get to see, but um, when you guys see him, tell him great job. Um this team right here, we were a uh, national interscholastic swim uh, team academic gold level, which is the highest level you can get. Our accumulated, accumulative GPA was 3.87. Uh, and so not only are they doing it countless hours in the pool, um, they are doing uh, the books as well. Uh, several of our kids were also in show choir, uh, jazz band, where they would come to us, practice at 6 in the morning, get out at 7, go to jazz band for an hour, go to school, come back to us, uh, go to show choir. So um, what we preach at Davenport Central is kind of what these guys embody. Uh, if you have the will, there is a way. Um, we had Bodie Logston here. He did a great job for us. He was a conference, uh, alt or a conference team in the IM. Uh, we got Gavin Hopewell. He's got one of our seniors. He's going to be going to Ambrose to swim. So... I'll get to see him every day in the same pool that we saw each other anyway. All right, buddy. All right. Uh, he's, he qualified in the 50 and the 100, so, you know, one of the fastest kids in the state. Uh, and then we have Ethan Peterson. Just today, one of his track coaches said uh, he is one of the kids that works the hardest. Uh, and just to see how coachable he is, uh, it just really goes to show um, that, you know, with uh, the right attitude, uh, and with the right guidance from their parents that they can achieve uh, a lot of different things. Uh, we're also missing Ben Cox. He swam uh, in the two relays for us. Calvin Devlin swam in the two relays for us. And then Charlie Jacobs, uh, which is one of the assumption kids that we co-op with. 
Um, he would come early again, then have to go to school and then uh, do all those other things that they have at, at the other school. And it just shows you the commitment. Uh, great job this year, guys. Uh, it's amazing to see all the, the talent that we have here. I mean, it's just awesome. And like I say every year, it's because of you guys uh, making the decisions to do the complex at Brady, uh, redoing uh, the West Gymnasium, our pool. With that vision, it allows us to grow. So keep up the good work, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Heller, and congratulations on a great season. Next up, Coach Wendy Allen and the girls' bowling team who placed first in the conference, All right? Tied? Please. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks for inviting us. Um, yeah, we uh, tied in the conference with North. We were both seven and one. Um, we were undefeated till our last meet against Clinton in Clinton. So, but that was okay. Um, none of my girls are here tonight. They're either working or at another sport, like a lot of them here tonight. Um, McKenna Osterhouse was on first team all conference. Uh, Alex McPherson was second team all-conference, and she also placed 25th in the state. They take the top 32, so she was 25th. Um, I just recently learned um, she is going to go to Hawkeye Community College. Uh, she was going to just go into trade at UTI. She wants to be a diesel mechanic, but um, they found out at state the uh, – Hawkeye Community College coach was there, and he said, we do trade as well. So she has decided to go to Hawkeye Community and bowl also. She's also uh, qualified for the junior gold. Bowling has these tournaments. Junior gold is where you qualify. They will actually be going to Detroit in um, June. So good luck to her there. And Emma Phelps was our honorable mention this year. So... This year we had three seniors on the team, so we've got a few. We did have some transfers come in, so hopefully we'll still looking good there. So um, other than that, like I said, thanks for having us here. We really appreciate it. So glad you guys are, you know, recognizing bowling these days because we really need that. So thank you. All right, and I, I forgot to mention, we did have some trophies and stuff downstairs in the gymnasium, but when your team is called, can you please bring those up to the table um, so that we can kind of present them to the board, and then also uh, there will be pictures after the schools are recognized, okay? Next, we have Coach Craig Nord from Davenport Central, second place in the conference, third place state finish, All right? Congratulations, Coach. And one of the most amazing things ever, I went up and watched the state tournament, and they bowled a perfect Baker game. Perfect. Each one of the kids got a strike twice. It was awesome. Congrats, Coach. Thank you for having us here. Uh, tonight I've got with me um, Nate Harchie two-year varsity. Um, I'm lousy on names. <laughs> Kyler Temper, he's a first-year varsity. And Brady Krager, four-year varsity. Uh, these, these gentlemen, along with uh, our, I have the other three bowlers that were there were Charlie Woldridge, uh, Ethan Hunt and Darian Hellstrom. Darian's playing tennis tonight. Ethan's playing soccer tonight, and Charlie's playing baseball. So, <laughs> uh, we, uh, like she said, we took third at the state level. Charlie was a uh, first team all conference. Nate was honorable mention, and. Uh, Darian and uh, was uh, 
first team also, all conference. And he qualified for state, finished uh, 18th at the state in individual. At, in, at the qualifying for the individual, he did shoot a 300 game up there himself and a 735 series. So it was a great year this year. And uh, hopefully it's going to be a tough one next year coming back, though, because out of the six bowlers, five of them were seniors. <laughs> so it's going to be a rebuild year next year. So, But I think we've got some good ones coming in and moving up. So everything will be – we'll make it work again. So thanks again. Thanks, Coach. Next up, Davenport Central Wrestling. Coach Mike Baker, is Coach here? All right, I'll go ahead and introduce those players. Colin Frost received honorable mention all-conference at 138 pounds. Kane Gardner, honorable mention all-conference at 285. Kanye, is he here? Yeah, come on, come on up here, come on up here, Kanye. And Jake Jancy, is Jake here? No? Well, you are, right? So there we go. Third team all conference at 150 pounds, and Jake was a state qualifier. Congratulations to you. Thank you. <laughs> then we have um, Mac basketball all conference for girls. Is Coach Burridge here? No? No? Okay. Angel Hinton received all conference honorable mention. Is Angel here? There she is. All right. Come on up, Angel. And Terriana Jameson also received all conference honorable mention. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Next, Davenport Central Boys Basketball, Troy Mullenberg. Is Coach Mullenberg here? We'd like to recognize Carter Light, all conference honorable mention. Carter? No. And Maddox Sullivan, all conference honorable mention. <laughs> Next up. Coach Meredith Dennis and the Davenport Central State Dance. Here comes the hardware. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't introduce all of them. We'll be here all night, and I'm missing half of them. So um, thank you. I'm Meredith Dennis. I am the head dance team coach at Davenport Central. Just wrapped up year 16 as the head coach, and it was by far our best year yet. You can see our awards um, on the board, and these are just our state awards. They do not include our regional titles as well as all of the other awards that we won at various competitions throughout the season. But I do want to acknowledge that we did go top three in all five dances this year at state, bringing home a state championship in hip-hop, co-ed, and all-male. Those are state championships 9, 10, and 11 for our team. So um, a big deal there. Um, it is our highest placing in Palm in school history, getting second um, right behind a crosstown rival. So we were very close. And we did have four solo qualifiers as well. If they could step forward, we had Trey Gordon, who placed ninth, Millie Macho, who placed eighth, Wrigley Macho, who placed fifth, and Mia Carr, who placed fourth at state. Um, not on the board as Mia also went on to nationals this year as an individual and placed seventh at the national level for her senior solo as well. So, so it was a tremendous year. We competed against some of the best in the state. Um, our hip hop division is probably the toughest division in the state of Iowa. And I could not be more proud of these kids. And it's a great way to go out. <laughs> Don't 
Thank you, Coach Dennis, for all of your work with the, with the dance team at Central. Thank you. All right. Would you like a picture with Davenport Central athletes? Are you doing all of them together? Okay. Got it. All right. Here we go. We'll move on to Davenport North. Mr. Mosier will be introducing the coaches. Yep. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, board, for having us here again tonight. We, uh, we had an extremely exciting winter. I'm really excited for you to meet the athletes we have here tonight. We're going to start with girls bowling. I'm going to bring Coach Jan Edwards up to introduce you to these ladies who had a great season. evening and thanks for having us. Uh, we have won the MAC conference, uh, been the MAC champions uh, for the last three years. Technically, we had to split the last two years with Central. <laughs> um, we got to go to state this year. It's the first time the ladies have gotten to go to state. They had a third place finish, and two individuals had a fourth place finish and 28th place. And Kylie had the fourth place, Catherine had the 28th. Is everybody okay? Okay. We have five on all conference. On the first team all conference, uh, we had. Uh, Kylie Greenwood with a 199.4. Um, then there was Victoria and Jenna on the first team. Catherine and Megan, they were on our second team. So um, those all made conference. Kylie set a new record for a high average of 199.4, mind you. <laughs> she was selected to second team on both all state and all district squads. Kylie, raise your hand so they know who you are. <laughs> she was also selected to the Des Moines Register team as an honorable mention. And for the first time for our school, she won the KWQC Player of the Week. <laughs> Should have brought it. These girls have worked really hard to get to this accomplishment. Unfortunately, I'm going to lose four. So we're like Central is going to be rebuilding. Okay? And also... Uh, my mission, even after I retire, will be to get a high school bowling lane. House is what I should have said. We're trying. <laughs> so we had a great year. I'm very proud of these girls. I forgot to introduce Keith Edwards. He was a volunteer for us this year and did a great job helping the teams. Sorry. Nice job. Next, we'll switch over to the boys' side, boys' bowling with uh, Coach Brian Price. Thank you all for having us tonight. Uh, this, this group of gentlemen right here, uh, I, I just can't say enough about. Um, I'm their third coach in three years, and we weren't exactly sure what to expect this year. 
Uh, any of you know that North Bowling has a pretty long tradition of outstanding performance at the state tournament. And uh, when we started this year, we just weren't exactly sure where we were at. Uh, but after the first of the year, these guys came together and started winning and didn't stop. In fact, we went to, uh, we went to our qualifying meet in Muscatine uh, thinking that we had a pretty good shot, and they bowled their way in. They beat some outstanding teams to qualify for the state tournament. Uh, we ended up finishing in seventh place, uh, which I thought was an outstanding uh, achievement for these guys. Uh, we were again, up against some incredibly tough competition, some of the highest scores I've seen uh, in many years. And, and so the job that they did this year was just outstanding. So thank you. Our team finished seventh at the state tournament. Uh, we had, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and introduce who's here. This is Jaden Demers, uh, Tristan Richards, sorry, Landon Grage, uh, Colton Dirks, Wyatt Hout, and Caleb Kindred. Um, so Caleb, excuse me, I'm sorry, Wyatt was one of our individual state qualifiers. Uh, Wyatt bowled his highest series of his career at our qualifying meet. Uh, to make it to state as an individual, and then turned around and equaled his highest game of his life in the first game of qualifying in Waterloo. Ended up finishing in ninth place, missed out just by an eyelash. Um, Maddox uh, Chapman was our other individual qualifier. Maddox was unable to be here tonight because of baseball, uh, but Maddox finished 13th in that. Uh, I'd also like to recognize tonight uh, Landon Grage, who was uh, an honorable mention all-conference bowler. And if I must say, he's, he's our only senior, excuse me, one of two seniors on our team. And this is a kid that you want in your squad. This is a kid who comes out and works every day, uh, inspires his teammates to be better. And uh, honestly, if, if I had to pick a kid to throw a strike, that's the kid I want. So thank you so much, Landon. We're going to shift to the hardwood now. We're going to talk about basketball, and I'm going to invite Coach Paul Rucker up here to talk about our girls' basketball season. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, sorry that I have dusty pants on, but I came straight from work. I didn't know this was going to be this big a deal, and this is, this is awesome for us to get recognized uh, with all of you guys with um, your accomplishments this year. Uh, I don't want to take too long because we've got a lot of stuff cooking uh, with our team, but this year we started, we went to Minnesota two games uh, out of state against perennial powers of Hopkins of Minnesota and St. Michael's of Albertville. If you watched the game yesterday with South Carolina, that Tessa Johnson, that's St. Michael's of Albertville last year. So that, those are the kind of kids we were playing up there. So we took two losses up there, and then we went the entire rest of the year and didn't lose until we got to state. Um, so on, the, on the, the record side of things, I mean, that's what people look at. So we were 22 and three, um, had a, fab, a fabulous year, um, went undefeated in the MAC, won the MAC championship. Um, got through qualifying to go to state, um, went to state, and I thought played really, really well, uh, but ran into a girl from Cedar Falls that got pretty hot on us at the wrong time, and, and we bowed out. But that does not take anything away from our accomplishments. Last year, we made it to state, too. Um, so I'm going to start. We had um, all five of our starters are on the all-conference team, so we had Demia Clark and Michaela Farnham were um, honorable mention. Kira Taylor, which I want to make sure all of you, can everyone just say Kira once for me, please? Kira. Okay, because everywhere we went, it was Kyra, and that's not her name. It's Kira. So, so, so we, wanted to, we want to make sure that she gets, she gets some props today because every time we got announced, uh, it was not the right one. So uh, she was uh, second team for us. She's going to go on and play at McKendry University next year. Um, hopefully become a judge. So there we go, dual enrollment student. Um, she was also all district, okay? Um, then we had um, 
Journey Houston, first team all conference for us. She's not here tonight. Um, Iowa Hawkeye commit. Thank God we got one more year with her. Unfortunately, this year we lost her for about eight games. She, she had a knee injury that she's recovering from, uh, but should be ready to go for us next year. But she was first team all conference, first team all state on every publication you can be, first team all district, first team all region, um, just a tremendous player for us. Then last but not least, we have Divine Burrage. She was first team all conference, first team all state, first team all district, first team all region, um, player of the year in the MAC. And then to boot, uh, th this is the big one. She was the Gatorade player of the year in the whole state of Iowa for girls basketball. Um, just going to say a couple things. We got a lot of people and I don't want to take too much time, but, um, our, our program is kind of predicated on, we don't have rules cause I'm going to look at everyone out here. A lot of people break rules all the time. Okay. Y'all drove here tonight and I'm sure like I was a little late and I was probably five miles over the speed limit. So that's breaking a rule. We have two standards. Okay. So you're going to treat people the way you want to be treated. That's what we used to say. Okay. It's not how we want to treat someone. It's how they want to be treated. Okay. That's a big difference between what we're doing now and what we used to do in the past. Second one is get to the next right thing. And these two people right here are great examples of that. A couple years ago, maybe we'd make a mistake on the court. And we'd let that fester for a while and then it would lead into another um, mistake or maybe two more mistakes or I would get flustered. And now as we're going along, the maturity level that these young women have is that they do get to the next right thing because we're all going to make a mistake. There's not one person in here that doesn't make a mistake every single day. So the good thing is, is if you can get over that mistake, keep on going, be a great teammate, play hard and have some fun, a lot of good things are going to happen. So thank you very much for having us tonight. We'll slide over to the boys' side now. Coach Marquez Davis is going to tell us about the boys' program. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I believe I have Chris Moss and Sarad Moore as a come up. Come on First, just want to thank everybody for allowing us to be here and just want to say congratulations to all the student athletes. Um, everyone that's here in this room today, you guys are all being honored because of all the hard work and dedication you put into your craft and um, this is deserving. You guys should all be proud of yourselves and just want to continue to see everyone in this room prosper and grow. Um, not only our kids, but everyone here in our Davenport community. Um, who we've got here standing, we've got our seniors, uh, Chris Moss uh, and Sarad Moore. Um, we don't have uh, Teneric Brady here. He's a junior. He's at work, could not make it tonight. Um, just had a, a great time coaching these two this year. Um, Chris, I've actually had for four years here at North, so um, he's more used to everything that I stand for and, you know, how we run our program than anyone here. Uh, and just seeing him blossom into a leader this year, seeing him really take that role as one of our captains and um, just really get a lot of our young guys to really follow his lead. Um, both of these guys, like I said, they're very, very smiley. You can see it. Um, but sometimes their leadership is, is quiet and they lead by example. Um, and that's just as good as you actually, you know, being vocal with things. So I'm just very proud of, you know, being able to develop with these guys and just look forward now as they're entering the, the fun part of high school, which is deciding where they're going to continue their education and um, just what's to come. Uh, they've got very bright futures and we really look forward to it. Um, like I said, Taneric Brady isn't here today. Um, he's a junior, so he'll be coming back with us next year. Um, he was honorable mention all conference. Uh, Sarad Moore, I only had him for a year. He transferred to us uh, at the beginning of this year. Uh, just an awesome kid. When you talk about just A plus, uh, real culture setter. Just a guy that, you know, as soon as he got in the program, you could tell just the respect level from everyone was immediately, you know, raised and antennas went up because he's really got that alpha mentality when he walks into a room and just was really excited to be able to get him in our program. Like I said, I had Chris here for four years and um, biggest kid you'll ever meet, just goofy, smiley, but uh, just one that just makes friends with everybody, wants to see everyone do their best and um, is willing to be able to put everyone first above his own. So um, just really excited now going forward, even though I'm, Losing these two, like I said, they set a very good foundation with some of our younger guys and really helped to bring them along. And just really look forward to seeing where they 
choose to go and complete their education, but also to being able to see them come back in 10, 15 years and, you know, be able to look at the young kids and be able to see us still there, hopefully, and uh, say, you know, hey, we were able to help North be able to get on the, uh, the right direction and be able to see our program continue to thrive. Um, also, too, want to uh, say congratulations to Davenport West and Davenport Central. Um, this year here in the MAC was probably, you know, I was a player here. I graduated from North in 2007. Now as a coach, uh, I would say this is probably one of the most balanced years when you talk about just talent from top to bottom. Uh, every team in the league, every night, um, it was going to be a bloodbath and it was going to be a fight. And Central and West, you know, to be able to look around and see all three of our public high schools doing well uh, in basketball at the same time was just it was thrilling. It was great. And it, it really brought about some great games here in Davenport. So just congratulations to Coach Mullenberg, Coach Robinson. Uh, really love to see what they're doing with their program. And like I said, Davenport schools are right now in, in very good hands on the basketball side. So thank you again. Our last group is our is our wrestling program. Coach Clay Baker was unable to be here tonight. Uh, this is a pro. He was in his first year coaching with us. Um, that program's on the rise. We saw fantastic numbers in our in our wrestling room. Um, and I don't know if Reagan is here today, uh, but uh, Reagan Bell was an honorable mention all conference selection. So um, we're looking forward to really good things from our wrestling program in the years to come. Thanks again for having us. All right, next, I would um, just like to take a moment to recognize our Davenport Community School District, District Unified Champion Schools, who were West, North, Central, Wood, Williams, Smart, Jackson, and Adams. Now, I would um, like to invite Coach Swords and Richardson, if they're here, or... Stephanie Reagan. Okay, okay. To uh, recognize our Special Olympic State participants. Hi, my name is Erifel Swords. I'm one of the special education teachers at West High School. This is Annie Camby. She's also one of the special education teachers at West. Um, if I could have our Special Olympians who are here come on up, because we have basketball and then bowling, and so I'll just do it back to back. Oh, and do we have our unified partners here? We might not. So for those of you who don't know, um, we are a Special Olympics school as well as a unified school. Um, our basketball was Special Olympics strictly, which meant that our Special Olympians were the only ones who played. We have a few of them who are able to make it today. Um, we have played two teams, three on three, uh, and our red team had Henry Jones on it, Ricky McCall, Kelsey Dugan, Kaylee Anderson, Lennon Shook, and Brayden Haas. This team, when we went to state, took second, which was pretty amazing. <laughs> Our white team had Atticus Buck, David Meacham, Molly Brown, Aiden Mauter, Dennis Humphreys, Harris Korbadzik, and Jordan Bloomer, and these guys took fourth at state. It was really amazing to watch these guys play basketball. This was my first time coaching Special Olympics. It was our first time going to state. It was all a new experience. Um, I absolutely want to thank the parents who helped us get the kids there and supported us as we navigated those waters of coaching and being in those areas, and especially our special education department who also helped fund some of the travel costs for us. Um, it was really wonderful to watch these guys learn how to play this very difficult sport, work as a team, and really embody what Davenport is and what the Special Olympics is to build up yourself and those around you. 
Um, so then we also sent people to bowling. bowling. <laughs> Perfect. Stephanie Reagan, who is a counselor um, at West High School, is the coach for bowling, but we all work as a, as a big group to help these guys get um, to where they need to be in the sport. Uh, we had all of our, our original Special Olympics bowling, they, um, they were with their unified partners, um, which was somebody paired from West to help them with the bowling and then we were able to take a number of them to state where some of the partners could come and some of the partners couldn't. Um, so if they couldn't, then we just put them in a different uh, individual bracket. Uh, so our bowlers would have been Kelsey, Kelsey Dugan, who she did individual third place, Braden Haas and Landon Brown as unified partners, which was first place, Lennon Shook individual fourth place, Henry Jones and Rachel Ellers, unified second place. Dennis Humphreys, individual second place. Isabel Yankee, individual fourth place. Aiden Mauder, individual seventh place. Atticus Buck, individual second place. And Molly Brown, uh, individual fifth place. They all worked so hard in both of these sports. We hope next year to continue and head to state again. We hope to add some more Special Olympic sports, and so maybe you'll see us twice. Um, and uh, it was just a, it was a really great time, and we thank you for letting us be a part of this wonderful recognition. Thank you, coaches. Thank you, athletes. All right, since Michelle is in here, I'll go ahead and uh, introduce coaches. Coach Kyle Verdon, look at that. He's almost all the way to the podium. <laughs> thanks, Coach. Uh, thanks to the board. First of all, I know it's a small gesture, but for kids, it means a lot being recognized because some of them don't get recognized at all sometimes, so it's great. Um, this year for swimming, it was a good year for us. Um, for West in general, um, we placed, I think, fifth in the MAC, which for the last couple of years, it hasn't been that good for us. Um, but it was, I, I can't complain at all. Um, we almost had a winning record this year. We lost by two points to Clinton, sadly. So it's so whatever. Can't do anything about it. I play that meet over and over again in my head almost daily. But it's whatever. Um, I have Eric here. He is our... Um, State swimmer here. He uh, was first first team all conference for the two IM, two individual medley, and the uh, one hundred breaststroke. Um, he placed first at districts. He was he qualified for state. He uh, placed at state, seventh place at state, with a time of fifty seven two, I believe. Fifty seven, yeah, fifty seven point two. All right. Um, it was good for him. It's it was really difficult for him this year. Well, for our team, basically, because we were transplaced out of our pool for about almost two months, whether it was because of chemical issues or our pool wasn't running or tile was broken, couldn't name a couple of things. But we managed, uh, thanks to Brian for letting us go to Central a couple of days, North a little bit. But um, it, all in all, it was a good season. Can't complain. Uh, Eric is a junior here, so he will be back next year. Hopefully, um, to get a state championship, um, he had a mishap in the IM. He might have DQ'd, might have flinched a little bit. I, it wasn't really that noticeable, but mm, the ref said it otherwise. You know, I might be a little biased, but it's besides the point. But yeah, it was a good season. I can't complain. Um, we had a lot of good. We had a good class, good swimmers. Can't can't complain at all. So thanks again for having us. Thanks, Coach. Coach Andrea Brown for bowling. Hi, thanks for having us. I'm Coach Andrea Brown. I'm actually the boys and the girls bowling coach for Davenport West. Um, here with me today, I have Abby Peters. She is honorable mention. Uh, 
um, all conference. And then if my boys would also join me, I have Landon Jakubson and Landon Brown. Landon Jakubson um, qualified for state. He bowled really well. It was a great learning experience for both of us. I'm looking forward to having Abby and Landon back on the teams next year. Landon Brown is a senior this year. Um, he has all honorable mention all conference as well. Um, I guess that's it. Thank you. And congratulations, Coach, on being named the MAC Conference Boys Bowling Coach of the Year also. Wrestling, Coach Dylan Mitchell. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Up here I have uh, Wyatt and Hunter. Um, both of these guys, high-level wrestlers, wrestle great at conference. They also both qualified for state, for individuals. Um, right there, putting them at state level means they're already top 24 in the state. Um, growing program that we have. Um, Wyatt's going to go on to play baseball in college because he's a senior this year, and Hunter's going to work in the offseason, and he's going to come back next year and shoot for the podium. Um, both these guys wrestle great at state. Um, there's a lot of matches going on, high-level wrestling. Uh, the matches that they had at districts, some of the guys they had in their bracket are the same guys that went on to win state titles or place in the top eight. So a tough district, went on, did a grind at state, and uh, we're looking back for Hunter to come back next year and then Wyatt to continue on in college playing baseball. Coach Nathan Butine, did I say that right? He's not here? All right, I will go ahead and recognize his honorable mention, athletes, student athletes. Ellie Holdorf, is Ellie here? That's right. And Elizabeth Poshin. Congratulations. I'm just going to take a moment. I want to say something about this team. I get to watch the Davenport West girls play a couple times this season, along with the Davenport North girls. Um, one thing I noticed about Davenport West is it didn't matter what the scoreboard said. They always gave 100% from the very beginning of the first quarter to the end of the fourth quarter. I was so impressed with their work and um, just how they played so hard. So congratulations. <laughs> And then Coach David Robinson, is he here? No? Coach Robinson was named the MAC Conference Coach of the Year. So congratulations to him for that. He had two players make first-team all-conference. Devontae Bradford. Is Devontae here? No? No? And hopefully I said this correct. Idris? Idris. Sorry, buddy. Idris Thomas. Come on up, Idris. And then hopefully I, I got this right, too, because I know that Mr. Lowe sent a correction to me. Uh, Elijah Reed Scott, is he here? Elijah, all right. Elijah. Elijah was named honorable mention all conference. Congratulations, guys, on a great season. All right, thank you. <laughs> Coach Stahl. Not here. All right, I can do this too. And I was told how to pronounce this last name of this first person Addison ABC. <laughs> she was a second place state soloist. Um, is Coach Corman here? All right, and then uh, Torrance Hicks was selected as an all-state cheerleader and performed at the Boys State Basketball Tournament. Congratulations to Torrance and Addison. All right, congratulations to all of our student athletes and coaches, and again, thank you, parents, for what you've done. Hey, could we please uh, have all of the student athletes? Uh, guys, don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Nope. We got a picture, one picture or a couple pictures with the uh, 
board, please. If you could all come up front here, around the table, behind the table. We're going to go ahead and take a five minute break while everyone clears out.
All right, and we are back. We will move on to, there's no presentations tonight. We will move on to student board reports. I don't know who we're going to go to, but McKenna, we'll start with you. Oh, thank you. I'll take that as an honor. <laughs> the West High School musical, Cinderella, has changed their show times to the 19th and 20th at 7 p.m., and then the 21st will be at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. The boys' soccer team beat Clinton the other day 5-1, so we can send our congratulations to them. V, my partner, is currently battling against North in a tennis meet, so we're very um, proud of our girls. And our boys' soccer team are currently battling PV in their adventures. The girls' golf is scrimmaging North tomorrow at Red Hawk, and our students are in full swing of doing... Um, prep tests for the ISS state testing. So that's all that's going on at West. Thank you, guys. Hey, what were the show times again? On the 19th and 20th at 7 p.m., and then the 21st will be at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, are there any board reports? Uh, Director klein -Jerome. Um, I attended North High's musical Something Rotten on Friday night. Um, it was very, very well done. Unfortunately, the game was going opposite that time, but uh, it was pretty well attended on Friday. Um, and I also went to art at City Hall um, a couple weeks ago. Any other board? Director Poston? Uh, since our last meeting, I was able to make uh, some more school visits. I'd like to thank the staff at Harrison, Truman, and Fillmore. Um, I had a chance to visit uh, classrooms, view uh, new curriculum, and also was able to uh, watch a uh, sit team in action. Any other board reports? Um, I went to something rotten on Saturday night because there were no games on. Uh, they did an awesome job. It was a great musical. Um, and then also I attended Art in City Hall too, and that is awesome that uh, the city recognizes all of our talented young artists, one from each school. And it, um, there was a ton of parents there, and when you get to go in, it's up on the third floor where the mayor's office is and everything, and they line the hallway with all the students' art projects. Um, and then they recognize them and give them their certificate. So it was a great, uh, well-attended event. And I think that's all I have. Any other board reports? All right, seeing none. Uh, may I have, or wait, we don't have any open forum, correct? No virtual, no, okay. Uh, so we have no open forum tonight. All right, I'll move on to the consent agenda. May I have a motion? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move the board accept the consent agenda is written. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Seeing and hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same time. Same sign. All right. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Superintendent report. Tonight's a brief one. Um, but I did want to comment on uh, the 2080 agreement that you'll see down below requiring action. This is a this is just a renewal of the current contract that we have, um, and it's more it's a two years that we just renew every single year. The the thing I don't want this to get confused with is the M the 10 year MOU that we sign, and so this is more about staffing and just kind of an agreement on how we're going to go uh, continue with the employment status of our of our SROs. So that's why um, I just kind of want to briefly comment on that. Uh, the, the chief and I spoke at city council, which uh, one of their management meetings at, at, at the same thing the, the right now the program is doing well. We are currently following the MO, MOU. I know people will get asked about that. And so I, I'm incredibly proud about the MOU that was created because that was built on best practices with data and in the meetings and constant kind of reviewing the, those situations. But this is merely we are re we are still requesting five officers how they're going to be paid for so that's what that is 
Thank you. Uh, committee reports. Breaking barriers committee. We had our initial meeting as a group and now our orders are to break into individual groups and we'll have our first individual groups in the next week or so. Each one will have one before we report back to the large group next month. Perfect. I was actually at a meeting with a couple of people there on that committee and we're really impressed by it. So kudos to you all. Uh, Elziak. Uh, we meet in May. Okay. Long range facilities planning. We have, I believe we have a meeting scheduled for this Friday. No policy committee, right? All right. Uh, legislative advocacy, uh, nothing that I know a couple bills have passed and I know we're kind of going to work on how those are going to affect our district and things. Um, finance committee. Kevin's going to be reporting on the February key measures in the monthly fund report and then later on under discussion items he'll be uh, going over the 2025 budget. The chair turned it over to you as a committee. All right. Um, we're going to start with a monthly fund report. I had mentioned last month that I'm going to take a little bit longer to go through this to kind of spell out. You'll notice I highlighted the federal revenue on the um, general fund. Um, obviously, that's mainly ESSER, but there's about $2 million more also in Title I funds. This is indication of last year the state was lagging in their reimbursement cycle. They're much better this year at our reimbursement. And it's just our, it's our pace of our spend in our ESSER funds that help drive that number up. Um, I didn't highlight anything on the expenditure side, but you can kind of see some of the differences where you see the salaries rising, which you expect a little bit. Um, but just of note, part of that difference of about um, $3 million is 1.6 million of it is ESSER and title funds. So a little over half of that is categorical funds so and you expect the other half to be um, generically speaking in the in the general fund the benefits went down but part of that's because as our staffing goes down our um, number of employees in the pool of insurance goes down 1.7 million dollars of that decrease was just in health insurance alone and with our vacancies we we're just under a million dollars less in FICA and IPERS so that accounts for some of the decline in those areas um, Purchase services weren't material as far as a difference, but um, on the supplies and materials, again, that was about a $900,000 increase in ESSER and title funds that accounts for a large portion of that. Um, the rest is general fund purchases and timing. Um, still, we're running about $18 million better um, as far as revenues versus expenditures. Um, this will start to even out as the year goes on, but this is just, just through February. Um, the part I want to emphasize, though, is on the on the second page, you'll see a lot of a lot of information there on our PEPL, our other funds, which is our capital project funds, which is kind of new to us, um, and our debt service. Um, in I highlighted those because they kind of all go hand in hand. Um, you'll see our PEPL and our um, other fund, Fund Thirty, is negative in the in the surplus deficit. That's expected because we're starting to spend some of our dollars in all of our projects, both in PEPL and in our capital projects. We will, the Thursday of this week, we'll receive our um, uh, $75.9 million, $82 million actually. Um, we'll receive those funds that we sold those bonds last month. They come in on Thursday. So in the month of April, you will see that number flip to a large number. When we go forward on that fund, we'll be I'll be breaking down another report that shows you where we're at in each of the projects that we're doing, especially as they start to get moving along. Um, we just need some time for the activity to start showing up in those. Um, I highlighted debt service because that num that fund is going to change significantly um, in March. You'll see in March that we made our final payment in our debt service for the old debt. But you're going to start to see in June, you're going to see a transfer into debt service for the new debt for next year. 
So there's a lot of timing things, and I'll talk more about that when I get into the other presentation. Um, the other part was I wanted to mention was our internal service fund. That is our self-insurance fund. You'll see that we're still sitting at about $24 million as a balance. It's something important, and I'll mention this again at the final um, page of our presentation later, that we're maintaining about a $24 million balance, which is going to be important as we go forward. Um, that's basically wanted to, what I wanted to go over on the monthly report and flipping over to the key measures. I mentioned last month that our UAB, it was something around 17% is what it was projected, and it's down to 15.5. That's expected for timing. Um, having a 15% um, UAB is, is a good spot to be at. Um, the one thing you'll notice on our 90, 93%, we budgeted 99.8% to spend. We're at 93%, which is definitely the vacancy factor. We're going to be filling that void with some other things, but we try and anticipate to level that spend so that we're at, at or close to 100%. And our solvency is going to 24%. I'll talk, as every month lately I've been saying, you were going to talk about this solvency ratio being too high, and I'll talk about that when I get into the next presentation. The last part on that page, too, you'll see a couple negative numbers that the model is showing negative on page two, Brenda, please. We have until the end of May to get an amendment done. I don't know if we're going to have to amend because there's some changes that happened that may not be put those numbers in the negative, but I'm going to keep working on our numbers and look at where we're at as we get through uh, March and April, and then we'll be able to tell where we're going to be. And I may come back with an amendment. Um, that's just showing the four categories. I'm going to talk a lot about those also in the next presentation. I know that was quick, but any questions on that? Director Barnes. Um, thank you. Good information. C can you explain once again the decline in benefits in that line? Um, looks like we're on a march downward, and that yeah. was in the first report you shared. So, Well, there's a couple things going to play. It We have l fewer people electing to take insurance, so that our census, I call it our census, number of bodies that are in our plan are going down. We are also losing some of our retirees off the plan um, and just our vacancies go to that. We, I, it's down a couple hundred bodies in the plan over the last year to two years. So that's, that plays an effect in what um, the amount of benefits. It should be slowing and kind of staying the same if we were close. I mean, we, we increased the district share by 2% last year and two, this current year and 2% next year. If we were consistent, you should see pretty much a 2% increase in that, but it's just not playing out that way. That's a helpful clarification. It, it doesn't have anything to do with a reduction in benefits. It really has to do with headcount and um, our overall employment base. So thank Correct. you. You bet. Does that conclude your presentation? Yes. Thank you. All right, we will move on to items requiring action. May I have a motion on subject 11.01 .01, West High School rooftop unit replacement? Mr. Chairman. Director Postian. Move the board approve the contract with train to replace the science wing rooftop unit at West High School under the Omnia state pricing agreement in the amount of $144,270. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. The motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.02? renewed 28E agreement with city regarding school resource officers. Mr. President. Director Potts. I move the board approve the intergovernmental 24D agreement with the city of Davenport regarding school resource officers as presented. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. second. 
Motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Eyes have it, motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.03, model classroom project phase two. Mr. President. Director Poston. Move the board approve the purchase of technical components from Midwest Computer Product Products with phase two of the model classroom project in the amount of $2,123,700. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Director Plandrum? I have a question. It, it, this model classroom is different than the elementary classroom. Is that correct? Yes. Because it's better. We learn from the elementary what we needed. Is that why? I think there's uh, a couple of things for that, and Tim can help expand on this, but the the needs at an elementary level are different so for example when you are doing phonics instruction in a classroom and it's coming off of that board the importance of that being larger the print being bigger to where in a high school it's more about the presentation of the project that's where the giant screens are a little bit more beneficial so it's just a different product at a different level and we did learn through that first phase of implementation and so, um, yeah, there were there were tweaks and improvements made based on that. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing and hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.04, purchase of Chromebooks for FY 2024-2025. Mr. President. Director Beck. I move the board approve the CDWG state pricing quote for purchase of 1,000 Chromebooks for fiscal year 2024-25 in the amount of $318,600. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Eyes have it, motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.05, teacher device configuration? Mr. President. Director Beck. I move the board approve the purchase of components within the teacher device configuration through CDWG in the amount of $921,780. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. Motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? The only thing I want to say is about time. Thank you for modernizing us. I'm disappointed it took this long. <laughs> uh, seeing no other discussion, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. Motion carries. All right, we will move on to discussion items. The only discussion item we have tonight is 12.01, review of the physical year 2025 budget, and I'll turn it over to the superintendent. Thank you while Kevin's uh, getting in place uh, in reviewing these documents. Um, this is part of our annual cadence. Kevin's going to uh, briefly review why we're doing this now and then the additional cadence necessary, but it's also... Um, it's kind of exciting, the visualizations, the, as Kevin calls it when it comes to picture time, <laughs> the visualizations that we have really show a, a story. Um, and Kevin's gonna tell that story tonight of, of where we've been and where we're going. So the notion that our, that our facilities, uh, um, our facility dollars and, and, and plans are starting to show up in here is pretty, really exciting to me. So Kevin, thank you for Kevin's work Kevin and his teams worked really hard to put this together. So, Kevin, thank you for, for all your hard work on this. Yeah. Tonight you're going to see two different variations of this budget. We're going to start with what you typically see on a regular basis. Um, we've been working very hard at this and being patiently waiting on the state to make some decisions. This is, this is kind of, I feel it's a little rushed this year, but mainly it's because there's some 
a lot of changes and it's it's been probably the most challenging I've seen in all the years with as many changes we have, but they're good challenges. Um, so I'm going to run through this. This first part is what you've seen in the past. So I'm going to go very quickly through this. If, if there's any reason to stop me from that, if you want me to slow down, let me know if there's a question as I go, just kind of give me the high sign because I want to get through this part so I can get to the second part, which will be something new. Um, might be a good way to look at our budget going forward. Um, so the first part is, this did this to me and the other. It's like, what are we really certifying? It got cut off in my presentation. Really what we're doing is we're informing the public of our maximum expenditures. I wonder if I can. Um, it's informing about what the maximum we can spend in all funds for FY25. Um, it's informing the public of, of our property tax rate for FY25 as well. The other thing, what, what are we informing the public but not certifying? Actual expenditures in 23, what we, ex the, what we expect to, to spend in 24, which I call the re-estimated revenues and expenditures, um, and what we expect our revenues and expenditures to be in FY25. A lot of variable go, variables go into that FY25 budget going forward, and I'll explain that a little bit in detail. Um, what does the what does the state really look at as far as when we certify our budget? Really, they're only looking at our expenditures, and they're in four categories: instruction, support services, non-instructional, which is our food and nutrition, other expenditures, with the total. Those are the four categories that get boiled down to, and you're going to see. These four show up throughout this presentation and the next one that I'm gonna share with you um, here shortly. Um, the, the next slide is um, how, how is it certified to the public? It's certified as a rate of a taxable valuation per thousand. I use the term millage. It's a millage that we have and I'm gonna show you what this millage um, comes out to be. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what the board has control of and what, and everything else that the board does not have control of. Okay, I think it's a Google Doc thing. I always blame Google Docs. Um, <laughs> these, these are the four areas that the board, five areas that the board really has control of. You have control over dropout prevention. In January, you approve the dropout prevention budget. You, you see that $5.262 million. Um, you have control over that. We use that for specifically dropout prevention. It is self-explanatory. Our instructional support levy, that's what ISL stands for. Um, it's a percentage. We max out our ISL at 10%. That's what the board does year to year. And every five years, we renew that levy. We also have a cash reserve levy. We have been cash reserving in the past. Remember when I said our solvency ratio was at 24.1% and I said this will correct itself in 2025? That number is right here. You see that we cannot cash reserve next year. We are, the limit is 20%. So when you go over, the state will not allow us as a board to cash reserve more cash. We may dip below 20% in 25. If that happens, that happens. We can always try and bump ourselves to that 20% limit. But since we're over to end the year, last year, we cannot cash reserve next year. When I keep saying this is coming, this is coming, this is what I mean, this is where it's at. Um, the board also has the regular PEPL levy that you can levy each year. You cannot borrow against that 33 cents, but it is a 33 cent levy that you generate um, as board elected. And then the final part is the management fund dollars. We've increased our management fund mainly because it pays for our increase in work comp, specifically our increase in our um, property casualty. There's been a lot of talk throughout the country about how much insurance rates are going up. This increase is mainly due to, to take care of those two items that are increases. So it's a dollar amount that the board elects to levy. I put in even $8 million. I put an even amount in there because it's important to know that that's an estimate and that is something that you have control over. Um, we feel that that is the right amount to levy next year to take care of our finances, take care of the things that the management fund pays for, specifically those two items. Um, 
This is where our property tax rate historically has been. There's each one of those components of our, the funds that generate tax levy. The main thing I want to focus on is our tax rate. Our tax rate is going to go from 1499 to 1370. If you remember a couple weeks ago on the 25th, this is the item that went out in the paper where we had that hearing. This is where that $13.70 shows up again this year. Um, the biggest difference is right in here where it says general fund of 1048. That's because of our cash reserve going down. Um, it's a direct correlation for that. So um, it's great that our levy's going down. Valuations, taxable valuations have gone up. That has helped that number. So we bring that levy down. This is the um, proposed, this is just a different way of showing our proposed tax levy. You can see that the cash reserve is at zero. You can see the general fund dollars at 1048, and you can see how, many, how much property tax dollars that's, the, that generates, the $54.3 million total. There's some property tax and replacement dollars in that number. Um, and you can see what the voted um, levies for physical plant and equipment are for the dollar 34 and the 33 cents that is the makeup of the 13 dollars and 70 cents it's just a different way of showing it so you can see the tax dollars behind it this is a picture it's literally a picture of what is in the paper on the 9th i believe tomorrow is what's going in um you can, I highlighted the four categories, and I said you're going to see these four categories mentioned. This is where they're at. Um, I do want to mention two things, and it's really hard to see. I Forgive me for that, but there's this line 13 says two-tier assessment. That is a tax that is that the state is replacing because of um, commercial property under $150,000 in value has a rollback of 90% instead of the 54% that um, residential property has. So the state is filling the gap between that 54 and 90%. That's how much those dollars um, generate. So the state is backfilling that. Just like anything, hopefully they continue to do that year after year. Usually what happens is they say we can't afford to do that and they pull that out. Just like this instructional support levy in line 11, that will go away, that 462000 They always put it in and say, ah, oh, we're taking it away. They've done that for decades. Um, the other I want to mention in the revenue side is line 15, um, the IDEA DEA and other federal funds. That's where your ESSER funds come in. You can see we went from 34 to 47, then down to 15. Um, I project these funds to have all of our ESSER spent this year. There may be a little bit of carry over into this first quarter of, of 25 um, a committed but not spent that could happen and we have that luxury of being able to do that i'm showing this budget if we have it all spent in fy 24 um, so there may be a little um, jockeying between 24 and 25 but you can see where that esser effect is all throughout these four categories on the resource side, instructions, support services, again, those are those four categories I'm mentioning. Um, ESSER funds come off of every one of those. So you, you, this, is, this is a part that I think has been difficult for me is usually you see a little bit of an increase on every single line. Well, ESSER kind of throws a wrench into that and a lot of that stuff gets pulled off. Remember, this is every single fund combined minus one, but every fund combined, it's not just general fund. So it includes all funds. And you can see again where that property tax um, levy of $13.70 comes in. This is what is in the paper um, this week for the 22nd. Sorry, um, and I apologize if I missed something at the beginning, but why are there funds that are put in and then taken out? Like you implied that the state puts them in and then takes them out? Even when I mentioned about the instruction support levy? Yes. Because by code, they have it as if they're funding a portion of the instructional support with, with state revenue. And they have always said, mm, we're going to pull that out because we're not going to fund that. They've just did the, they have done that for more than 20 years, as far back as I can so remember. So by law, they have to say that they're going to fund it. 
and then through an appropriations they defund it so this this is from the department of management so the department of management has to put it in so it's really dollars that they put in but they'll take out we don't count on those dollars when we use when we go through our budgeting process it's a good question this is just the a blown up view of that expense side of those because it's really hard to see when you're just taking a snippet of everything um, this again it shows a 1370 and you see some reductions it kind of looks it doesn't look consistent but when I went through everything I had to what I would say scrub all the ESSER funds out of each of these categories one thing I want to mention is we all understand what instructions what, what instruction is this line 31 a instructional support unfortunately it's cut off but there's a lot of things that go into that instructional support line so when you think about classroom teachers you're, that's what we're talking about instruction when you look at our instructional support line yes that's 87 million dollars but when you look throughout that that first line of student support services is 18.7 those think of things like nursing counseling um, other support services that are given directly to students that's what we're talking about they're not per se classroom teachers but a lot of your at-risk dollars are in that line um, there's just a whole plethora of things your general administration your school administration where your principals come into play your business central administration including the board costs are in that line a large portion of your operations and maintenance and student transportation keep in mind these are all funds so when we spend dollars on some of those things from an operation standpoint out of the pebble or save funds that's in that number so when we look at those it's very important to know that um, support services is a is a very large um, category with a lot of different functions within that again the non-instructional is primarily your food and nutrition and your other services you can see site acquisition and construction your debt service and your AEA support are in those lines um, again and with your total property tax again at 1370 per thousand it's just a blown up view of the expense side of the of the prior um, of the prior slide any questions before I get to the picture show I call it the picture show because it's kind of exciting to see I think uh, Kevin uh, go back to slide five and then um, right under dropout prevention at ISL level uh, uh, how is that uh, figure arrived at the dropout prevention no the ISL the level. ISL the ISL is usually a percentage it could be surtax but we don't do surtax in our district but ISL is 10% of your per pupil allocation of your total allocation so that's what we go by but how do, how do we set it as a district every five years the board says hey we can go up to 10 percent so we we do instructional support like things like textbook adoption supporting other items within instruction that's what those that instructional support line we just have always maxed it out historically okay. and then when you go down to and i know you've explained this to me before but for the benefit of the rest of the board when you talk about the regular PEPL fund and then you talk about the voted fund, the regular fund, that that level is mandated by the state? The regular is directed by the board. Okay. The voted PEPL is voted on by the taxpayers. So this has not been changed for a while, the point Correct. three. three. So the regular PEPL is a year to year. Okay. And the voted PEPL will expire in 2019, so there'll be a need for a, a renewal of that dollar thirty-four before 2019. So how do we arrive at point three three? Point three three is the maximum amount that you can elect to. That is the maximum. Amount. That is the maximum amount. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, what one other question? I know some school districts will do the surtax rate. What What is our thought process as far as not participating in that? We have not elected to do instructional support surtax. There's 
really two reasons. One, it's a large variable because it goes to income taxes that are owed. And it's, it's so variable that you don't have control over knowing exactly how much you're going to get in income surtax. Um, we're fortunate with the state reducing income taxes in the next couple of years. There's a lot of districts have, have an income surtax and they're going, oh my goodness, we're not generating enough dollars to pay for our instructional support program. So we're fortunate that that's happened. There's some districts that do a variation of, but we're, we don't at this point. Thank you. This one looks a lot better. Um, this is something new that um, Frontline, when we use our Frontline, we use our tool to do projections. This is something new that they generated. It's fresh as of two weeks ago. And it's something that when I was getting our budget completed within Frontline as well, I ran this report and I thought it was really, really important that we kind of go through this. I'll go relatively quickly, but it's interesting where you can see more of a pictorial version of what is going into the budget for next year. And it'll also give you the 23, 24, and 25 um, in as far as fund balances and other items. So this first one is what are the district's major revenue fund types? Well, here's your general fund, your debt service, your capital, and all other funds. Your debt service and capital are two that are um, changing a lot. It's it's a large variable that's going in. For FY25, I have the debt of 14.3 million. I'm assuming that that second issuance of debt that we're going to have is going to be in FY25. That's how it's it's running just under seven million dollars for this first issuance. Who knows what's going to happen on the second? The capital that we have in there is for both of those issuances combined. So you're seeing this is revenue. Keep that in mind on the revenue side. So we will have that revenue come in on cap on the capital side. Keep in mind the um, capital would be all of the debt that the revenue that we're getting from selling bonds, but also your sales tax. Um, so those two numbers are varying quite a bit in FY25. Again, the challenge that I keep saying, wow, is, are these numbers really right? And they do make sense. Um, but you'll notice that our general fund um, is roughly 52% of our entire budget. We spend probably 80% of our time talking about the general fund. That's why I keep saying we're going to be focusing a lot more on our PEPL and save capital projects going forward as those get cranked up and a lot of ac activity in those. It's going to be important that we spend a little time on those. This is the same information for FY25, but more in a, in a bar graph where you can see what has happened in 23 versus 24 versus 25. You'll, you'll see in this blue is you see ESSER funds going in, and for 25, mainly it's ESSER funds going out. Um, that is all funds combined, so keep that in mind. But you'll also see on this, the gray bar, this is before the new bonds. This is for the first half of bonds and the second half of bonds. So those are um, capital projects. You'll, those are three, two items that really, really skew these numbers quite a bit. But you can see kind of the trend of what's happening. Yeah. Sorry, quick question on that. Um, is, why is there debt on... 24 and 25, but not 23. Is that the debt from the? Bonds? Yes, from the 24 and 20, 2015 bonds that were sold. Okay. There's just that tiny bar in that gray. That's the final payment that we're making, that we made in March for just about a million, a little over a million dollars. Okay. So there is an orange line there. We just can't see it. Right. Okay. Correct. <laughs> it's just we rolled from one to the other, and you don't see a gap in that, in that debt other than. This represents the one million dollars. Keep in mind these are fifty million dollar increments, so it's kind of from a from a view standpoint, it's kind of hard to see um, those items. Well, the debt is really in the orange. Sorry, 
Director Barnes. Kevin, one other thing on, on the view. Um, I, I'm assuming we're probably going to see this on a regular basis. And just as I'm sort of trying to think about the visualization, if I heard you correctly on the first slide, the blue and the yellow is where we spend most of our time. And the gray and the red or the gray and the orange are, are sort of new. Maybe having that blue and that yellow grouped together on the next visualization in the future would sort of help us understand where the steady state or if we are slipping in that the space is where we spent a lot of time. I agree. We're going to have, we're going to have to have some changes and going forward. So we'll work on that as things get moving for next year. Here's your major expense fund types. Um, keep in mind the debt and capital, like I said, um, these are ex on the expense side now. I got to keep up with my notes. Um, you'll see on our debt and our capital, they vary greatly. You're going to have your, you have your capital expenditures and your debt service in this 14 million, $80 million. We're still looking at 60% of our spend being in our general fund, which is expected. Um, that percentage would be a lot higher if we didn't have as much capital expenditures and debt expenditures going on. But so that's what skews the percentages of the total. Um, normally that's much higher. That's why we spend the majority of our time on the general fund. Again, why we're gonna make some focus on the debt and capital. This, this is the graphical view. You can see what's happening across. It's kind of the same story going across. Um, there's a lot of construction going on right across here on our capital, on our expenditures. You see our general fund go up and down a little. There's a little bit of ESSER effect. Again, you're talking $50 million increments on those, on those lines. So it's a lot more dramatic than what it looks on here, but you're seeing that decline. Um, but those are the two major changes on there. This is our general fund revenues. This is, um, you can kind of see the four categories that we talk about on a monthly basis. Um, state is 60%, locals 32%, taxes. Um, and our federal revenue is back down in that $14 million range instead of in the 30 and $40 million range. This is your comparison. Again, the ESSER effect. Um, you're going to see there's some state aid increase in there with with the changes are going on going on with our um, levy and so forth, you can see that declining where the local property taxes are declining. This is by this is our expenditures by object. We, we look at we look at things in those four categories, but on a monthly basis, we talk about salaries and benefits. We talk about purchase services. This is what it looks like for the general fund for next year. Um, that we're looking at about 79% of our salary and benefits with all the things you guys go to when you go to ISB, you guys talk a lot about what should be the level of salaries and benefits in your general fund. And you hear an 80% number being thrown out there. Well, 79%, I can't get much closer than that on this projection. Um, we do have some, some purchase services and some um, other expenditures, but we focus on the salary and benefits the majority of the time. This is just the graphical from 23, 24 to 25 by object. It, it's pretty self-explanatory. I won't go into much detail of that, but you can see the ESSER effect happening in salaries and benefits as well, as long, also with declining staffing. This is our operating expenditures by function. Remember when I said when we, we talk about revenue in one way, but the function area is really what we're looking at is operating the instruction support services and other you can see our instruction represents 61 percent of our budget we talk about support services remember i mentioned all those different support services that go into that number that's a large piece of the pie but there's a lot of support services that go into that number um, those are your your two largest uh, portions in that in the general fund yeah. Question. So would those typically until any prior to any legislative changes are a lot of those monies that flow through us to say the AEA 
of the support services or is this all our actually good question because that four percent of other is aea and a few other miscellaneous things so no it's not aea flow through okay the aea flow through is in the other okay perfect thank you thank you for that And this is just the graphical view where you can see the breakdown of those major categories. This is our fund balance comparison, which is what we focus on when we start talking about where we at uh, with our key measures. This is our general fund. You can see what's happened that we've, we've had a gap of revenue versus expenditures and that's our growth in our financial health. We're gonna be really close in 24 Grant, remember these are $50 million increments, so it's it's a little bit different as far as when you see that little bit less of expenditures. It's it's bigger than what it looks like in this picture. We are proposing 425 to spend some of that because we're getting on that high mark, and we have been putting stuff towards salaries and benefits a lot more for proposed for 25. This, the other part to mention, this is before any vacancy. This is fully funded with all the positions that we have to fill. We know what happened, what has happened in the past few years with our vacancy factor. So I, I don't expect this to be this much of a difference, but we would hope that when we ride this wave of vacancies out that you're gonna see these numbers leveling of and being right where we need to be financially. So that 2025 is fully funded. Full, full positions. Um, enough on the general fund stuff. On debt service, this is, this is interesting because we've moved, this is revenue and debt service. We have to move the dollars for the next year's debt at, in the prior year. So that's why in 24 you see 14 million and 25 you see 14 million. Um, I'm, I was, uh, I'm assuming we're going to have the debt for FY25 for the second issuance as well. That may not happen till later in the year, and that would be an overestimate, but it's just an estimate. I'm banking for earlier than later on this model. Um, so we have to have those dollars moved over in 24. Um, in 25, it would be just the second year of those two debt issuances that we had. You'll see I start to put a little bit of interest income. That's what the local is in that do those dollars. That may be higher, but until we get there, um, we'll see where it goes. This is the expenditure. You'll notice that in 24, you don't see much expenditure. The revenues come before the expenditures, which is a nice thing. When it, up here, you see that amount, that 14 million amount. You don't see the expenditures in 24. That's just the last issuance of that we paid off last month of just over a million dollars um, here. This is the first start of the larger debt payment that we'll have, if that makes sense. It's all um, just other expenses. Okay, so currently we, um when we're doing any projects like this, we're either putting, taking out a save or pebble or ESSER. So we are moving into this Sedlow new building. How are, like, do we pay it out of save and pebble and not ESSER anymore? And then, or do we take it right from the bond money we have or how does this work? That fund 30 that I keep mentioning, it's a new fund to us. That's where all the expenses occur on the dollars that we borrow. The, dollar, the dollars that we receive this week all go into that fund 30. But when we pay the debt, the debt goes from saved dollars over to uh, debt service. So really there's three funds involved. We, we sold the revenue bonds, mm -hmm. which is sales tax dollars. That's those, that has to fund in the, for the next 20 years all of our debt service. So we move the dollars from save to debt service and then we make the payment for the bonds out of debt service. So the dollars that we're operating with are in that fund 30. So at the end of that, of that fund 30, we should have all the dollars spent. Any remaining dollars go into Pebble funds so that we can um, continue with projects. But So they um, can go backfill Pebble and 
Yes, but you have to complete the projects that, sure, you're, that sure. you're bonding first. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And here's our fund balance, which you're going to see for the next 20 years. You see that in 23, it was just that little bit of that final debt. In 24 and 25 going forward, we will be maintaining approximately $14 million in debt and $14 million in revenue. And that line will should go straight across in future years as we go. Um, capital projects, um, there are three items in this. This is the PEPL fund. This is a capital projects fund, that new fund 30 that I'm talking about, and our save funds. So when you see this, local would be interest income. Um, the state, this amount is our, our uh, sales tax dollars that we receive on a monthly basis. And this other, it's skewed for 25 because that's the um, $80 million that we received this week. And you can see narratively what's going to happen. I have the $80 million received in 24 and, and in 25 um, in that revenue. And the capital projects expenditures, again, it's those three funds. Mainly it's all construction. Um, it's just where those expenses lie. Kevin, sorry to interrupt. Just as I'm, as I'm trying to process these, um, a little bit more. If we had like a 2026, then it would look a lot like the 2023. Is that right? Or is it because we're still, we would still be, we're still working on a lot of those capital projects? I think it's going to, for this, yeah. I believe it's going to look a little bit more like 2024 because you're going to be taking some time to do the projects that we're working on. So this is ex our expenditure. So when you think about it, there'll be a lot of smart and north happening in 26 and probably into 27. So it's just a matter of the timing of when those those projects are going to be spent. Um, I couldn't, I, could, I don't think I could do this for 26 just yet. But so it's a, the revenues though, like the one back with the yellow. Yeah, so with the revenue then, the yellow bar basically Yes, correct. That. Okay. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. And you can see this is these are the fund balances in the capital projects. What you're going to see is that starting to come back down and even out over the years. But those fund balances come in because we receive the revenue in 24 and 25 for that for the debt issuances that we're doing. Um, you'll see the expenditures rise as we get through those um, projects. Um, special revenue. These. This is this is a total about face a little bit. This is our activity and management fund. What you're seeing is special revenue is they're only used for a special purpose that's not general fund or PEPL or save. These these this would be our management fund, our property, our work comp, our voluntary retirement payments come out of, and our activity fund, all of our student activities. When you think about that, it's not. The student activities doesn't amount to as much as the management fund on a percentage basis, but you'll see here that um, we're building this in, in anticipation of increases in our insurance mainly. Um, yes, we're going to have some decreases in our voluntary retirement as people age out of our voluntary retirement, um, but we're maintaining a balance that is appropriate for the management fund. The other thing our management fund is doing as a side note is there's changing in our there's changes in, in the insurance plans where it becomes a percent of loss. It's probably a rabbit hole I shouldn't go down, but when you have instead of having a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollar deductible, it's gonna be a percentage basis. Insurance is working on everybody across the state. This is happening too. So we need to be prepared for some of those deductibles that are gonna be coming our way if we have some large claims. The uh, propri proprietary is our food nutrition. The one thing I want to note on this, you'll see that we've had a large balance. One of those is we've been getting some federal funds for supply chain issues, and I think it's been mentioned quite a while back about supply chain funding from the feds. Um, 
one thing we've, we're doing is we're going to be reducing this balance going forward. Remember, we did a little bit higher increase for food nutrition folks. That's, that's where this is starting to even out a lot more. Granted, these are $2 million increments, but that's much closer as far as what our revenue and our expenditures are going to be. And we'll keep, that'll continue to, the revenue decline is because of that supply chain. I think it'll be a little bit more, but we're just trying to blend that a lot better going forward so we can spend some of those balances down to where they need to be. Um, this is our internal service fund. This is, the, this is the last slide, but the one thing I want to mention, our internal service fund has nothing to do with the budget that you're certifying on the 22nd. And this is the one fund that is our fund that we manage, but is not part of the certified budget. But this is important nonetheless, because you can see this is our self-insurance fund. When we talk about raising, raising our premiums by two and 3%, this is where this comes into play and you can see that we're running in that 25 to 30 million dollar balance and you can see what our revenues and our expenditures are that we've got that blended pretty pretty good overall um, this is exactly where we want to be um, it's consistent um, and as we go into 26 we'll see what happens this number can is could be volatile if you have a large claim or several large claims that would hit our stop loss insurance. So we're very wary of where these revenues expenditures are at, but it's, it's a really good mix in this. Is there a certain percentage difference that's ideal? Like I know you want the blue line to be a little higher than the orange line in your self-insurance fund, but you want them to be fairly close so that you're not. You know, yes. There's two nuances to that. Um, when Director Barnes was asking about the decline in our um, benefits, if we if we continue to have a decline in the in the census, the number of bodies in the in the plan, the balance doesn't need to be quite as high. So there's that factor, but um, we don't want to have it go so high that we're overfunding it. I'd much rather put it in salaries than I would in benefits if we if we can, but we need to be very cognizant. We can't have the spikes and valleys is what I don't think we should be. We should that would be what I would worry about the most. I like that this is kind of consistent. Um, we'll watch what our census does from year to year as well, so we know what balance we should be at. But that's, this was an attempt to give you a little bit different spin on what our budget's looking like, what our adoption's looking like. That's why that first PowerPoint was more of what you've seen in the past. But I wanted you to see it in a little bit more of a narrative in a picture view to see where we're at, where we've been, where we're going. Is there a state amount that uh, you should be funding your insurance, though? Like is, there should be... Two months worth, six months worth, two they, million. They like to see nine months worth. Nine months, okay. I personally like to have a year's worth, but I'm ultra conservative in that. Um, but our uh, nine months is where they tend to fall. But you shoot for 12. I shoot for 12. I think 12 is a good number. Okay. And, and I'd like you to change your terminology when you say people age out of insurance. That sounds a little old. <laughs> What would you like it? <laughs> I was trying to be kind. Director Barnes. Kevin, this is just a general question. The 4% in debt service, um, how does that compare to similar sized school districts? I mean, I know that we've just done an issuance, but is, is that a fairly manageable level of, of, of debt service for a district our size? I would say we're on the lower end than a lot of districts. If When you compare the size of our district to others, um, historically what happens is districts will have rolling debt. So they'll roll debt off of the roll debt, debt on and try and maintain an even flow. We're gonna do, we're doing a, we had debt, we flatlined and now we're going back up and spiking. 
it would be nice to have rolling debt so you can continue your plans and continue those, but that's just where we've been. Any other questions? That conclude your presentation? All right, we'll move on to administrative reports. Are there any board requests? All right, we'll go on to board reflection. Start with Director Beck. Um, definitely the student athletes uh, recognition. And one of the things I was so happy to see was um, the uh, unified champions uh, teams getting the same recognition as every every other team. I think that's so important, and um, I'm really glad that we have a have a high school in our district that's able to do that. Thank you, Director Poston. Well, by far and away the athletic recognition, but also um, very happy to see what um, um, Kevin just presented to us. Thank you, Director Posh and Director Hayes. I think that was the ditto as well, the athletic reports and the 25 budget. Thank you, Director Hayes. Director Barnes. It was great to have a packed room for uh, student athlete recognition in our district. It's nice to see what everybody's uh, doing and, and achieving. And I also want to thank Kevin. I thought the visualization of the budget and finance is excellent. Thank you, Director Barnes. Director Potts. Uh, once again, the recognition, I think we need to keep in mind that that was only a fraction of the students that were participating during that sports season because so many of them are continuing to be involved in school in activities that are going on now. Uh, so, when, I mean, that's, you know, all studies show kids that are engaged in extracurricular activities in schools do better, not only in school, but in life in general. Second, financial presentation I understood it <laughs> pie graphs I like I like them so much I got to stop at the village inn on the way home and pick up a silk pipe <laughs> thank you director Potts director Klein Jerome um, I also uh, enjoyed all the recognition and to know that there was just a fraction of the team here getting recognized but it took the entire team to get where they were um, and the fact that um, something rotten going on, Cinderella's coming up. We've got kids in drama, musicals, uh, the art down at the city. We have a lot of kids um, getting a lot of recognition, and that's pretty awesome. Thank you, Director Klein. Jerome, Superintendent Schneckla. I did owe a lot of, I second a lot of what the board members said about the finance, but the highlight of my night was we're hot off of a national championship game where Dawn Staley coached South Carolina to a national championship. And I was standing next to Divine Burridge, who is actively being recruited by that coach. And I asked her, I said, well, what, what's she like? She's like, oh, she's really cool. She's a nice lady. So you want to think about the, the, the work that that kid has put in. She's at the highest level, the highest level in the country. And that's pretty cool. And that's what a point guard looks like. Holy cow. That's really impressive. I mean, so, uh, and, and kudos to all of our student athletes are just smiling from ear to ear um, at, at the accomplishments that they, they've, re they, they've accomplished. Thank you, Superintendent Schneckloff. Again, uh, the student athlete recognitions were amazing. Um, Again, with the championship game, I'm just so glad that so much emphasis is on women in sports now. Um, the championship game, I mean, everybody forgot that there's a men's championship game coming up here too, right? Tonight. Um, it was a huge thing. I'm so glad to see girls wrestling finally got sanctioned in our state. It's ridiculous it took this long, but I'm glad it's there. The other thing I do want to no one talked about this. We hired a district athletic director that can really move the game on our youth sports integration to start getting our feeder programs going. It's going to be a huge thing for our district, and 
all these improvements we're doing in long range facilities is gonna help that out and I'm glad that a lot of the groups mentioned that. And with that, Director Potts, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Ayes have it, motion carries, meeting adjourned.